Listen, I don't know why my camera's so blurry, but we're gonna work with it. Uh, today, I saw this design by Exponential Design, and I thought, yeah, you know, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I made my own variation, and I'm gonna show you uh, how to make this very simple GeoNodes thing. It's not that many nodes. So, what's this video about? It's about that, okay? We, we've done the intro, let's go for it. So, uh, in Blender, we're gonna go into Geometry Nodes, create a new GeoNodes group, and delete it. So our cube is a Geometry Nodes modifier at this point. And we want kind of this grid of circles that expands based on the swirling function. So to do that, first we need a grid of circles. So I'm gonna start off with a grid. This grid is composed of points. Uh, I can change the number of points just like that, and you can control this procedurally with a parameter. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use a set 15 by 15. Next, we are going to instance on these points a circle, uh, specifically a mesh circle. The reason for mesh circle, and let's bring down the radius. Uh, the reason for mesh circle, if I can get these to be the right fucking size, is uh, because in the fill type we can set it to n-gon and uh, in solid view you can see there's actually something there. If we did curve circle it would look like that, right? So we want there to be an n-gon. Uh, actually let's make it 20 by 20 and reduce the size to 0.02. Uh, so here we have a bunch of circles and we need them to grow and uh, contract, become grow and shrink is the word, uh, based on a swirling function. Uh, you could do this like mathematically, or if it's a spiral thing, let's just use a curved spiral. So I'm gonna join a spiral in here, uh, make the radius, start radius is zero, and radius is one. So now you can see we have this uh, swirl, and let's make it higher resolution, and let's have it spin over time. So I'm gonna basically look at the proximity of all these instances, these circles, uh, to the spiral, okay? Uh, so that's just kind of a cheap way there's nothing wrong with it, right? A, a, uh, instead of cheap, let's call it a resourceful. It is a resourceful way to do it. Ain't that fucking wrong? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need this to rotate on the z-axis, as you can see. So let's have that be a function of time. I know from making this project before uh, that that is too slow. So I'm just going to multiply it by two. So it's going twice the speed, okay? We want this to... Uh, be a geometry proximity function, okay? Uh, tells us, uh, hey, instances, which are really just a bunch of points of this grid, uh, how close are you to the spiral? And then scale the instances uh, relative to that. So we are gonna use a scale instances node. Uh, what is the scale going to be, right? It's going to be a function of the proximity uh, to the spiral. So. We can send our spinning spiral through a geometry proximity node. We're looking for how close it is to the points of the spiral. And let's uh, take the distance and make that the scale. Well, seems there was an issue there. And you can see it says input geometry, it's a curve, doesn't like that. Easy enough, curve to mesh. Let's just say I knew that was gonna happen. And uh, now you can see it's doing something. <laughs> it's definitely looking a bit uh, strange. Um, let's uh, like diagnose this. Um, I think the issue is it's a little hard to tell from the top view, but if we go over here, you can see, oh, the, the thing is three dimensional. It's going up on the Z axis. So no wonder it's only like scaling in the middle because that's the only point that's touching it. You know what I mean? Take the height set it to zero. Okay, so now it's compressed on the xy plane. You look at it, and now we have something that looks a bit better. I don't like that the average size is like very tiny, so I'm going to map range this distance so that instead of zero to one, let's like clamp this in and make this a tiny bit negative so that even the smallest circles are visible. And there you go, we now have a spirally function. By the way, we don't even need to realize instances here because we're evaluating this relative to the points of the grid and then we're instancing. Not really, but in a sense. Um, finally, let's make a material that's very colorful and I actually made it more colorful than exponential design, right? Uh, so no shade. I mean, I'm taking your idea and trying to make it myself, so no shade. Um, thank you for the inspiration. We're gonna make a material, 
I'm going to call this material spiral. And here's what we're going to do. So right now, these uh, this material is linked uh, to the geometry. Uh, I'm going to set this to cycles. Why am I setting it to cycles? Because we are going to be using a parameter called random per island, which only works in cycles. And uh, I lied to you. We do need to realize these instances. Boop. <laughs> and now this is going to work. Or I guess what we could do is we could realize instances after we scale them. That way we get the color and the scaling. Oh, big brain, big brain. Um, okay. So what I'm thinking is we take this, you could just kind of use it as this, but if you want it to be colorful, send it through a hue saturation, connect it to the hue, make it red, and that's going to color shift the uh, color red. Uh, we can actually add more control to this. So instead of just connecting this to the hue, we could say do it relative to some scaling. So the closer this is to zero, the more the colors are going to be similar to each other, if that makes sense, right? Because there's less of a disparity or less of a distribution, we'll say, a range of hues. Either way, take that, set it to add in addition, ironically. Um, that's just going to offset the color, make that a function of time, and that's how you dye this thing uh, over time, and it looks cool. I, I do think the spiral is spinning too slowly, though. And maybe, now we're just kind of honing in the look, maybe we could have more circles. That looks cool and uh, decrease the size a little. And I'm happy with that. Uh, let's see what this render looks like with a background that's either, ugh, I think kind of like a dark gray is gonna be the move. Take the camera. Uh, you could do it from a weird perspective. I'm just gonna do it from a top-down perspective. Boop, boop, boop. We made this result in like seven minutes, so. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Hopefully, you learned something in this tutorial. And as always, I like to promote the ever-living potato chip bag clip out of my Patreon at the end of these. If you want blend files, early access to tutorials, or exclusive tutorials, and I have a crazy idea for an exclusive tutorial this month, uh, click the link in the description to become a patron. It's the best way to support what I do here uh, because I make the tutorials generally available for free. So if you support my mission... Oh, my mic is going sideways. Whatever. If you support my mission, whatever that means, uh, that you know the best way to do it. So that's all I have to say about Patreon. Thank you to 600, 700 some patrons that are active. Used to be more, but what are you going to do? Anyways, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.